August tale. The forest fires started early that August. All the storms that might have dampened the world went south of us, and they took their rain with them. Each day we would see the helicopters going over above us, with their cargoes of lake water ready to drop on the distant flames. Peter, who is Australian and owns the house at which I live, cooking for him and tending the place, said, In Australia, the eucalypts use fire to survive. Some eucalyptus seeds won't germinate unless a forest fire has gone through and cleared out all the undergrowth. They need the intense heat. We'd thought, I said, something hatching out of the flames. Not really, said Peter. Very normal. Probably a lot more normal when the earth was hotter. Hard to imagine a world any hotter than this. He snorted. Uh, this is nothing, he said, and then talked about intense heat he had experienced in Australia when he was younger. The next morning, the TV news said that people in our area were advised to evacuate their property. We were in a high-risk area for fire. Load of old tosh, said Peter crossly. It'll never cause a problem for us. We're on high ground, and we've got the creek all around us. When the water was high, the creek could be four, even five feet deep. Now it was no more than a foot, two at the most. By late afternoon, the smell of wood smoke was heavy on the air, and the TV and the radio were both telling us to get out now, if we could. We smiled at each other and drank our beers and congratulated each other on our understanding of a difficult situation, on not panicking, on not running away. We're complacent, humanity, I said. All of us. People, piece of the leaves cooking on the trees on a hot August day. And we still don't believe anything's really going to change. Our empires will go on forever. Nothing lasts forever, said Peter. And he poured himself another beer and told me about a friend of his back in Australia who'd stopped a bushfire burning down the family farm by pouring beer on the little fires whenever they sprang up. The fire came down the valley towards us like the end of the world, and we realized how little protection the creek would be. The air itself was burning. We fled then, at last, pushing ourselves, coughing in the choking smoke, ran down the hill until we reached the creek and we lay down in it with only our heads above the water. From the inferno, we saw them hatch from the flames and rise and fly. They reminded me of birds pecking at the flaming ruins of the house on the hill. I saw one of them lift its head and call out triumphantly. I could hear it over the crackling of the burning leaves, over the roar of the flames. I heard the call of the phoenix, and I understood that nothing lasts. Forever. A hundred birds of fire ascended into the skies as the creek water began to boil.